Hey guys, it's Lenny. Well, I'm getting ready to start on my hickory chest project. Um, that's what we're getting into right now. Now, it's a raised panel hickory chest with um, mortise and tenon joiner <coughs> with a cedar lining. The um, wood used is uh, kind of reclaimed wood. Um, in a sense, I, I, don't, I don't know if it can be considered reclaimed. Uh, it's kind of a bittersweet, uh, not too long back, uh, don't know the timeline. I got a phone call from my grandfather and a hickory tree happened to have fallen on his home. Um, once the tree was, you know, taken down and the repairs were done to the house, of course, um, he had this huge hickory tree laying in the yard and uh, asked me if I wanted it. Well, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I jumped on the chance, so I took my truck trailer over there, uh, loaded it up. That was a daunting task. It was a pretty good sized tree. I took it to a local mill and had him mill it into uh, four quarter stock and eight quarter stock for me um, for my shop. After a few days, uh, he, uh, the Sawyer, call him Robert. Uh, Robert had the lumber milled up for me and uh, gave me a call. I went and picked it up and it's been out drying, um, air drying ever since. And uh, now I actually have a chance to use it. Uh, uh, a client of mine asked for a uh, chest, didn't care what kind of wood I used. Uh, the only specification was no visible screws, cedar lining. It's got to smell like cedar on the inside. He doesn't want it to smell like cedar on the outside. And, um, you know, just uh, make it a hundred years, yes, make it the best that I can make it, uh, which is easy enough to do. Um, so, to give you an idea, now I'm not going to get into the, a lot of the milling process to get it down into usable lumber. Um, if you want to know how to take rough lumber and mill it into usable stock, there's plenty of videos out there and uh, I just don't think that uh, you know it'd be kind of repetitious for me to do the same thing but I will give you a kind of a, a general idea of where the uh, wood and all came from these are slabs these are my eight quarter slabs that came out of some of the small uh, parts of the logs and uh, these slabs along with some of my four quarter boards uh, you see over there stacked are going to be milled down uh, to rough dimensions, resawn into uh, four quarter stock or you know uh, one inch stock, and then I will plane and mill it down to you know its three quarter final finish. But uh, beautiful wood. Um, it is actually uh, got some features in it that I really like and and, and that I want to use in this project. And and some of it is it was beetle born or, or, or uh, infested I guess at one time the tree was a little beetle so there's little bore holes and uh, give you an idea of what I'm talking about let's see if you can see this see all those little black dots those are little beetle bore holes um, and the uh, blackening of the wood I'm not sure what caused that uh, but um, that's a uh, it's got a pretty good look to it. Now, I'm just going to use a regular, you know, raised panel bit set. It comes with a rail and style bit as well as the panel bit, the raised panel bit. And um, the raised panel has got a nice feature to it. So it'll have a nice look. This is some MDF that I just ran a test, you know, uh, panel on just to, uh, you know, see how the bit was going to do and and how the what the look is going to look like so I knew what to go with but uh, it's uh, hopefully going to be an interesting project hopefully you'll enjoy it uh, you know watching me build this uh, chest and it's going to be a couple of series um, a, a couple of videos because I don't think I can get everything in in 15 minutes no matter how hard I try so it might be broken up over you know two or three videos um, so we'll consider this part one uh, the introduction of the hickory chest um, so let me get uh, the camera set up and then we'll start with um, routing the routing style pieces. Okay guys, I'm over here at my router and um, 
I've got my, I went ahead and installed my rail bit. Now, as far as, you know, the rail and style construction, the rail bit, the rails, and this is one of my test pieces here, has that little tenon on the end, and the rails go into the style. And uh, what I mean by that is you've got your vertical style, your horizontal rail, turn it around the right way, and it slides in like this. You want to make sure that you got a nice fit. You want to make sure that it's nice and flush. And your setup is going to be the most important. Uh, once you have a nice setup, then uh, you're pretty much good to go on the rest of your pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, adjust the rail bit up to where you have about an eighth of an inch on this lip right here. And that's a good number to shoot for. So um, I, I like it. I, I think it uh, works well, that eighth of an inch. So that's what I set my bit up for. And the, there's not a lot of stability when you're running your end rails through here. So what I do is, because my router does not have a T-slot yet, this, this is the router table that I built for the extension of my table saw when my router broke not too long back. I had I needed a router table, so I built a router table extension for the table saw. And I don't have a T-slot in here, so I have to kind of, there's a few workarounds that I've got to do on, on, on a few things because of, I may not have all the proper tools or, or the right tools um, to do what I need to do, so I, I have to do a lot of workarounds. And, and one of the workarounds for this particular uh, project is I got a nice square piece of block here, good size. Uh, it gives me a lot of stability. When I set it against my fence, I can butt my rail right up to it and run it through. And uh, I've got plenty of support to do that. Um, that way it's a little bit safer and my hands are clear of you know, the spinning blade. Um, always make sure that everything's unplugged You know, when you're setting up your uh, routers or saws or anything it's always good safety practice to do that all right so now that we got the right height for the um, rails the next thing we want to do is set up the fence and depending on the type of fence you have um, your setup should be pretty much the same my fence because this is a router table extension my fence moves and then it clamps down on both ends to um, keep everything where it needs to be the first thing that I do or that you want to do is clamp down one side of your fence and then on this rail bit <clears throat> if you notice there's a nice bearing right here uh, and it's perfect for taking some type of straight edge uh, and this is the straight edge I use when I set up my router bit um, I always try to use router bits with bearings and you know a lot of times you can't but most of the time I can because it's it makes it so much easier to set up um, but basically this straight edge will sit against the uh, bearing of the router bit and then I can take my fence and Line everything right up, and once that's done, then I'm ready to go ahead and start um, routing all of the rail pieces. So, what we can do now is uh, I need to plug in my router, and uh, we'll get started. Okay guys, hearing protection and eye protection is always a good thing. Need your ears and eyes. And uh, 
we'll get started. And this uh, backer board, not only does it give me some stability when I'm routing my rails, but also it helps out with uh, tear out. You get a nice clean cut um, when running through because that ingrain, you know, tends to want to tear out. Well, having that backer block, you know, helps to prevent that. So this is the first one. Got a few more to go. We'll get all the rails routed and uh, then we'll get the bit switched out and put the style bit in and uh, we'll get started on that we will show you how that does all right guys I went ahead and installed my style bit and uh, the one thing that you want to you know in order to set this up is with the rail pieces that you just one of the rail pieces or one of the good things to do is um, route you a couple of sample pieces of your rail and style so you have them for future setups um, once you get the right you know fit down and everything's nice and flush and all make a couple of sample pieces uh, to hang out you know store in your shop and for future use but one of the things that you want to do or uh, in order to set it up is on this top cutter here the you want that top cutter because that's the cutter that cuts the groove you know all the way around you know all four panels and it is the same height as that little tenon on your rail piece so if you take your rail piece that you just routed and adjust your bit according to you know where it's flush with this tenon here um, then everything's good to go all the way around. So, actually, that looks good. Don't have any fear for their setup. But if you do, you know, make your adjustments accordingly, you know, up or down. And, uh, but um, that looks good for me. So, once again, set up your fence. There's a bearing on uh, the style bit as well. Take your straight edge, lock down the other side, and uh, let me you're good plug to go. in my router again, and uh, we'll get started. One of these days I'll think about um, moving that plug in closer. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. It's a nice little profile. A little bit of burning, but I'll take all that out with uh, sanding. Um, it'll clean up nicely. Uh, one of the things that you can do is...
run it through a second time, clean all that up. All right, I've got quite a few style pieces to cut and um, I'll run that through and uh, show you what it looks like when it's all together. Okay, back again. I've got all my uh, styles and rails routed. And um, I tell you, it doesn't get any better than that. Not bad, not bad, not bad at all. Now, the panels are going to come a little bit later. Um, as you saw behind me, and uh, I'll turn the camera so you can see a little bit. The stock that I'm going to be making my panels and my lid out of, um, I haven't milled it up yet. I've only milled up what I needed for all of my rail styles and my legs. So that is for another video and it'll, I'll probably start on um, milling and gluing up the panels tomorrow. But uh, for now, I'm working on rails and styles, rails and styles. Because there's a little bit of detail in this. Um, if you notice, and, and I'll show you uh, the steps for that um, coming up next here, but on the end of my style, I created a tenon all the way down. It's a half inch thick, <clears throat> half inch deep, by three eighths inch thick uh, tenon. And uh, that will go in to my legs and, and mortises that I make in my legs all the way around. Um, I went ahead and uh, cut a few of these tenons on the uh, styles to get my adjustment right and everything and, and see how it was going to look uh, before I broke down my setup on my router in case I needed to go back and reroute another piece or something uh, if you know if I messed up or it didn't work but everything uh, worked out well and um, so we're going to get into that next and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing there but all in all you should have your panels together or your rails and styles together and ready for your panels now in order to um, put your panels in uh, you want to this detail all the way around this detail that the router creates in the top of these uh, rails and styles is the same thickness or same depth as that groove and for my particular router bit set and you'll have to look at your router bit set to see exactly what the depth is but mine's three-eighths of an inch um, thick or deep so whenever I measure for my panels do it one of two ways um, the first way is with everything all together nice and tight I can then take a measuring rule or measuring tape or tape measure um, and measure in between this little detail lip here and uh, it'll tell me the height and width of my panel needs to be now bearing in mind that this is hickory and in, in all woods most woods you know you've got expansion and contraction so wood tends to expand and contract um, against the grain not with it so my panel depth which is it should be uh, 14 and 3 8 that I'll cut pretty close to you know 14 and 3 8 but on my width here um, 11 and 3 8 that I'll cut a little shy just to give it some room uh, these panels are going to be floating in there anyway but it gives it some room for expansion and contraction uh, hickory is a real tricky wood uh, from what I'm gathering and learning. This is actually my first time working with hickory. And uh, I 
you know, I talked to a few people, uh, one of them being uh, over at uh, George, over at uh, the Woodworkers Guild of America. You know, I was talking to him about the hickory because I was air drying it and everything and when, when I could use it, when it would stabilize as far as moisture content and everything. And um, one of the things, you know, it, as he was answering my question stuff, uh, one of the things that he said to me, which kind of has stuck, is, uh, welcome to the world of hickory. And, yeah, hickory's a, a beast of its own. Um, and... You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things. It's one you have to have some sharp bits and sharp blades. Uh, it'll just eat up your blades. Um, this is some very dense, some very hard wood. So uh, it's it's important that all your blades and everything um, are sharpened, so you can get some nice clean detail and you don't have a lot of tear out and everything. And you know, you don't tear up a lot of pieces or waste a lot of wood. But um, the uh, one thing I wanted to, you know, make sure of was that once all this got together, that this hickory was stabilized enough to where I wouldn't have any splitting, checking, you know, or anything like that, uh, you know, after the project was put together. That's the last thing I'd want to do is give it to my client and, you know, then a month or two down the road, you know, my panels start splitting or, or something like that. God forbid. <laughs> Knock on wood, it's never happened before. Oh, that's MDF. I don't think that counts. Um, but, uh, so now we're going to get into the legs, making the legs for the, the chest and then cutting these tenons as well as the mortises and the legs, uh, so everything can start fitting together and then we'll get ready for, you know, basically a test fit, um, minus the panels. Uh, I'm, I'm going to test fit it, dry fit it basically. Um, and like I said, I haven't started on the panels yet. I've got some wood to mill for that, but, uh, we'll, um, get to that in another video. All right. So let's move over to the table saw, get the, uh, dado blade set up in there and, uh, get some mortise and tenons working on here. But, uh, talked about earlier workarounds. Um, you know, if you don't have the right tools, uh, to do a certain job, you have two choices. Go out and buy the tool or figure out a way to work around it to get the same result. Um, the economy being what it is today, going out and running and buying, you know, every tool because you need it for a particular job. Some people can do that. I'm not one of them. Uh, so I do, I, I have some workarounds. Eventually I will get the tools that I need and, and get everything uh, that I need to you know, just go from one thing to the next without any worries. But um, for now, I've got a few workarounds that I have to do, and I'll show you them just in case you run in the same situation and uh, you'll know what to do or, or have an idea of uh, one way you can do it. All right, let's move over. All right, guys, um, over here at the table saw is where we're going to cut the tenons for the, on the styles. Um, that will go into the mortises on the legs and um, the legs a little bit of, show you a little bit of detail um, the legs have mortises all the way up on two sides and that way you know for the front panels and the side panel you know all the way around and each leg will um, look like this my legs are cut out of um, inch and a half by inch and a half thick wide. Uh, they're cut out of some eight quarter stock that I had that I milled down. Um, and I was lucky enough that uh, out of one of these eight quarter slabs that I was telling you about, I was able to get um, all four legs out of one, which left me quite a few for a future project. So, what I uh, set up in the table saw now is uh, a half inch dado blade set. Once again, make sure everything is unplugged when you're doing all your setup and everything. Um, God forbid if this wasn't unplugged, I would not be touching my blade. But, make sure everything's unplugged and safe um, and, and always be aware of, you know, what's going on, you know, when you're around this machinery. But, um, 
on the style, my tenons are three to the, three eighths of an inch thick, and they're a half inch wide. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I've got my half inch dado blade set up here, and uh, we're going to cut the styles first, and then I'll take out one of my shims, uh, bring it down to a three eighth inch set, and we'll cut the mortises for the uh, the legs. And when I was talking about the workarounds, um, when it comes to the mortises for the legs, um, you'll see one of the workarounds that I have to do. Now, I do have a mortiser, but um, I don't, I, laziness, uh, sitting there mortising all those legs, both sides, all the way down, it would just, it taken forever. So... I go ahead and cut the mortise on the table saw. Now, if you notice, the <clears throat> mortise stops about two inches because I want basically like a two inch leg, um, you know, from where when my styles are in there, it gives me a, a two inch leg. Um, and then I cut a little detail here, but so what I'm trying to say, the point I'm trying to get at is my mortises stop, you know, about two and three eighths inches before I get to the end of the board. And normally, you know, when you're running through a saw, you're going straight through. Well, in this particular instance, and I'll show you exactly how I did it, um, so you could be absolutely safe as possible doing it. Uh, once I got to a certain length or distance on my leg where I wanted the mortise to stop, I would take the piece off and then I would go over to my mortiser and mortise the last little bit, uh, you know, because the depth of the, the, the three inch mortise when you get close to the end, you know, of course, that's the round blade. It's going to be a lot shallower, and it's going to kind of be like a little swoop up. So you have to clean it up and bring that down to uh, the last depth. Now, if you don't have a mortiser, then by all means, you can, you know, basically chisel that out. Um, working with hickory, make sure your chisels are sharp and uh, clean up that last little bit. It's, it was about, you know two inches of uh, cleanup that I had to do. So basically I did just do two inches and two inches all on all four legs of my, uh, with my mortiser. Um, and then uh, go back and kind of clean everything up with a chisel. And we'll get into that in a minute uh, and I'll show you that work around. But one of the things now, depending on how your shop is set up, um, you want, I, I, the term, I mean, I've heard it used before. I think it was George over there at uh, Woodworkers Guild of America. You, you want your tools to kind of talk to each other. And that's that, That's exactly how you put it. And that's exactly correct. Uh, with my legs, and, and I know we're going to be getting into the styles here in a minute, but let me talk a little bit more about the legs. When I run my legs through the table saw, I have to be able to go over to my mortiser and have the same exact distance on my fence so when I'm mortising and cleaning up that last little bit that everything stays you know nice so you have a nice clean mortise all the way down so you want basically my saw setup is talking to my mortise setup and it's you know so I can go from one right to the other and everything is and I don't have to worry about anything um, being out of whack or, you know, my mortise kind of, you know, being jagged and, 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 and messed up. And it's all in your setup. It really is. Uh, the, the, that little bit of time you take to set things up properly uh, really pays for itself in the end. Uh, the end results are, are so much better. So we'll get into that further, but let's go ahead and get everything set up for these uh, tenons and um, I know I've got this here that I've done earlier but 
I have just the scrap, you know, test piece that I made earlier as well, so I could have it for future reference um, of my tenon setup. So I can just come right over here to my table saw and set everything up. I, I installed a sacrificial fence onto um, my fence. On my table saw fence, I put a sacrificial fence, and um, that way, if I had to, if if I needed to bury that blade a little bit into, um, you know, to to get everything just right, then then I'm able to with the sacrificial fence. Uh, I'm able to cut right into it without messing up my table saw fence. So, last little bit of setup here on that. Bring this blade back down. I can take and um, get my blade height right. Once again, I can't stress it enough, and, and, and everybody stresses it, you know, that you when you see videos like this, is make sure that your tools are unplugged. Uh, it only takes a second to um, unplug something and plug it back in to be safe, and it only takes a second to lose a finger or hand or an arm. So uh, I'd much rather take that second to unplug something to make it as safe as possible for me than uh, take a second and lose something that I could really need. But, um, so let me get everything set up here. Okay. And now I can bring my fence over. And, uh, we're ready to go. So, take Ooh. See? Make sure you got your ears and eyes on and go back over. That was my light switch. Plug everything in. And uh, I'm good to go. Now the one thing I forgot to do was turn on my dust collection system. I hate that. But I'm sitting here talking to you guys and uh, I forgot to go uh, flip the switch for my dust collection system. I need to get one of those handy dandy little remote things that, you know, kick it on or, um, you know what I mean. One of them things. So now, and uh, I tell you guys, if you don't have a set of these in your shop man go to Harbor Freight go somewhere and get you up a, a set of calipers I mean it um, I, I just recently got these probably about a month ago and I have used them so much uh, it, it's unbelievable the things that I've used them for and one when I'm milling my wood to make sure that I'm exactly three quarter inches thick and uh, like when I'm doing my tenons and uh, get my setup for my tenons. And let's see here if you can. You won't be able to read that. The lighting's terrible. But anyway, 3 8 Perfect. So 
and, and I mean, I could, yes, sit there and, you know, try to, you know, is it going to fit, uh, you know, is it tight, is it this and that, and then go back and readjust my blade, but um, these calipers have just, uh, makes it so much easier, I don't, I don't have to, because the more times you sit there and, and test fit pieces and all, it kind of, it, that snug fit that you might have had when you first started, uh, you kind of lose that a little bit, you know, by putting the pieces together and everything. So, I like my little caliper. So, get yourself a pair. It's my recommendation. <laughs> All right. Um, so, that's the setup for uh, cutting that tenon on the styles. And basically, you want to go through and, uh, this is my test piece again. You want to go through and repeat that process for all of your styles. And um, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight styles to do. I had to do the math there for a minute. Um, and uh, then I'm, you know, everything's set up. I can run them through, get them done, and uh, move on to the legs. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'll mill these. You guys go ahead and mill yours. No, I'm just kidding. You know you're watching the video sitting at your desk and not at the shop. And uh, we'll um, move on to the legs and the mortises. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about with the workaround. And uh, we'll get started on that. All right, guys. All right, guys. I didn't realize, um, but I've got quite a few segments just in this long video. So... I don't want the videos to be too long, so I'm going to end here. Um, we just finished cutting that tenon on all the styles. And in the next video, we're going to uh, start on the mortises on the legs, show you that workaround. And then we'll get into uh, the dry fit, and hopefully by that time I can start milling uh, my lumber and getting it ready glued up and all for my panels and we can get into the panels and then get this baby put together and then work on the lid so on and so forth like i said this video is going to be broke up into or this particular project is going to be broke up into uh, a few videos and um i'm not sure how many two three videos depending on how long they are uh so we'll um we'll get into the legs uh, dry fit and everything together and then uh, working on the panels and stuff in the next video but for now we're gonna stop here I'm gonna stop here and uh, stay tuned for part two <laughs> all right well listen I appreciate if you stuck with me this long you know through all this uh, hope I'm keeping it somewhat interesting and um, showing you some things that it's hard really hard to not beat a topic to death there's a lot of people out there showing a lot of the same thing and um you know i want to you know make project videos uh because it's something that that i actually enjoy doing uh or i'm really enjoying it but i want to make sure that you know i don't repeat a lot of the stuff that's already out there uh to just make it towards mundane and then nobody will be interested in me <laughs> it's been like been there done that uh you know what's this guy have that's uh new to offer you know kind of thing hopefully i can offer something uh which i think i can but anyway long story short i appreciate you sticking with me uh and um we'll uh, continue this and pick this up in the next video so thanks and uh, stay tuned.